Good morning, I'm Mr Moffat and uh, today we're going to be preparing a soluble salt. Alright, so we're using an insoluble metal base and an acid. And the ones we're going to be using are a black powder called copper oxide. And we're going to be using an acid, sulfuric acid. And it's 0.5 molar, which makes it an irritant. So we've got the red cross on it, the black cross. We're going to be heating up the acid. So we're going to have hot acid, which means we want to be stood up. Secondly, we are going to want to have uh, our safety specs on at all times. If the teacher's wearing safety specs, you should be wearing safety specs. Okay. Also, we've got copper compounds, and copper compounds aren't very nice for the environment. So at the end, we're going to have a waste bucket where you can put unused copper oxide, any unused copper sulfate, although we have got a use for that. Um, anything uh, that might contain some copper ions, we don't want to go down a sink, we don't want to uh, live in a world surrounded by dead trees and upside down dead fish, as per the sticky label. Right, anything else? Apart from that, you've got the usual ones where you need your bags out of the way and you need your hair tied back. If my hair gets any longer, I'll have to tie my hair back. We can look forward to that happening in a future video. Right, pause the video and go and get your equipment and then sit down ready for the next uh, step. Okay, step one, measure 40 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid into the beaker. Right, when you're doing this, you're not going to need a measuring cylinder because we don't need to be that accurate. We're going to be adding the copper oxide in excess anyway, so it's okay to use the graduations on the side of the beaker. And then after that, you're going to set up the tripod and gauze and the heatproof mat and heat the acid gently using a Bunsen burner until it's almost boiling. Once it is almost boiling, you need to turn it off straight away. We don't want acidic fumes in the lab, so don't walk away from it. It's hot acid. Heat up until you see it just beginning to bubble and then turn your Bunsen burner off, okay? You should be stood up, remember, we don't want anything landing in our laps. And heat the acid gently using the Bunsen burner until it is almost boiling. So gentle blue flame, not roaring. Heat up the acid until it is almost boiling. Okay, as you can see, it's just beginning to boil now. So as it says, uh, as soon as it's just about to start boiling, turn the Bunsen burner off. That takes us on to step three. Using a spatula, add small amounts of copper to oxide at a time, stirring with the glass rod. So, copper oxide, spatula, small amounts. You can see it turns a blue colour almost straight away. But when you look at the bottom of the beaker, there will be unreacted black powder. If I stir it, that unreacted black powder soon disappears. Like so. And the solution has gone clear blue. So, we need to continue to add more black powder if the powder disappears. We stop adding when some black powder remains after stirring. So we add a bit more. With a spatula, we stir with a glass rod. And you continue this process. Until All that black powder has disappeared and we would add more black powder now and stir it until in the end we were left with a solution of blue copper sulphide and some unreacted black stuff at the end which means we know that we've reacted all the acid with the insoluble base and we're left with a salt solution and some unreacted 
uh, metal base, in this case copper oxide. Okay, so we've got to the stage where we've got a blue solution and some unreacted copper oxide at the bottom, which means we can now go on to uh, step five. Set up the filter funnel and paper over the conical flask using the clamp stand to hold the funnel. Uh, filter the contents of the beaker from step three. So I've left this for a while, so it's quite cool to the touch. We can move the Bunsen burner uh, and tripod away for a moment. Take your conical flask your filter paper, fold it once, fold it again, okay. put it into the funnel, and we can now pour our mixture into there. Okay, remember there's a waste bucket available uh, for your unreacted copper oxide and any of the copper compounds that we're making during this practical. Okay, so our filtration is complete now and we've got um, this, our copper oxide that's been uh, kept behind and a nice clear blue solution of copper sulfate which we are now going to put in an evaporating uh, basin as per uh, step number six. When the filtration is complete, pour the contents of the conical flask into the evaporating basin and evaporate this gently using a water bath. So, here's our water bath. Here's our evaporating basin, Bunsen burner. Pour the contents of the conical flask into your evaporating dish. And now, if you leave that, uh, the steam from the uh, water bath will then be able to heat uh, this solution and uh, gently, with a bit more control, um, evaporate away uh, most of uh, about half of the water. Okay, we've been uh, heating this for a while and uh, we've reduced the volume by about uh, half. I hope you can see that okay. So now, uh, as per the instructions, we are going to uh, take that and put it on a uh, cool windowsill and leave it to evaporate. Okay, so this is our uh, crystal. It's been on the uh, windowsill for a few hours and uh, we've actually got quite a nice uh, sort of single crystal growing in the middle uh, a few other little small ones um, but just to show you that uh, if you put your name on a bit of paper and uh, put the crystal on top of it leave it on the windowsill uh, you'll be surprised uh, just uh, what sort of results you can get um, even the same day we'll come back to this in sort of 24 hours and uh, see what we've got let's just have a little zoom in if you can see that crystal can you see that there Okay, right, well this has been left for a while and we've got quite a few um, crystals have uh, grown in amongst, uh, there's still a little bit of water left which is nice and it means it's probably going to be a bit easier to isolate an individual crystal so that they've got quite a distinctive uh, shape, let's have a look, there's one, so if you place it 
on a paper towel. Uh, just dab it dry. And you can see the uh, very regular crystalline structure of that copper sulfate crystal. Okay, and you can see they've got a very regular diamond uh, structure, and the bigger they grow, um, the more regular shape they get until you can have one like this, if you leave it long enough. 